love it. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Look at this. This is, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey, I'm not surprised. Hey, what's good, my bros, my homies? What's poppin'? We've got another full UFC predictions to make, breakdowns to make. This one's gonna be Derek Lewis taking on Sergei Spivak as the main event. Now, obviously, before we get into the breakdowns, you already know. We go to Money City, and the first Money City comment's gonna be from Vega, an OG of the channel. So Vega went for a, a big parlay, and this must have paid. He had the main event inside the distance, Poirier money line, Dan Hooker inside the distance, Wheelai Zhang inside the distance, and Ryan Span as a nice underdog. Oh my goodness, this parlay, it's money. That's money. Then we've got Magic Shrooms. Big shout out to my bro in the Discord. He disagreed with my picks, but hey, it's money. You dusted my picks. You dusted the disagreements. That's a great parlay. And the thing I really like about Magic's betting game every week, he's looking for just locks. You know, parlay locks, two piece locks. So yeah, big shout out to Magic Shrooms. He's probably got the lock again. So yeah, I'm gonna catch up with you in the Discord later today or tomorrow. All right, Solar Warden said, hey, listen, under 1.5 Span Reyes, under 2.5 for Avola Azatar, and under 2.5 with the hooker Puez. Hey, it's Money City, that's money. All right, moving into the next Money City comment, we've got Milan Dip. And Milan Dip just said, look, Pereira, salute, Money City. Hey, no lies told. Round five, it's money. Now, the Crook Dower said, Zhang, Blanchfield, that's money. Now, these picks are kind of easy, but at the same time, money's money. And that was money. All right, we've got SS2121. He said, Zhang, Hooker, Moicano, Dustin, Money City, put down the emoji. Hey, it's money. That took you to Money City. That's that's beautiful. All right, we've got Robs, and Rob said, Zang, Gutierrez, fight starts round two, Poirier Chandler, Money City, A. Hey, that smacked. That really smacked. You know, that smacked harder than uh, Gutierrez smacking Frankie which, you know, kind of made us all cry. All right, Publicity said, Olberg, fight doesn't go the distance for Vola, Azatar, Blanchfield, Zhang, Money City. No lies told. No lies told. That's money. Pure money. And the final Money City play is going to be from Nordic Hellers. Now, Nordic Hellers didn't get the Silvana prediction, but that wasn't going to be the Money City play. The Money City play is Poirier and Gutierrez. And that's money. Now, guys, did I make it to Money City? I did not. I did not make it to Money City. I took the CKB lineup, and I kind of feel like that lineup was, it was an okay lineup. You know, only one real performance that didn't really show, and that was Brad Riddell. I took Michael Chandler, not because Michael Chandler's better than Dustin Poirier. I took Chandler purely because this matchup was going to be fireworks, and it did show to be fireworks. So yeah, at plus 150 up to like plus 180 on Chandler, I don't think it was a, a bad bet. Then I took Zhang in a parlay, which, you know, of course, of course, Choi got dusted. Of course. So yeah, my lineup not a profitable lineup it all came down to israel adesanya and i did say on my breakdown if izzy loses this fight it's gonna look like leon and usman and yeah same score same round same result all right let's get into breaking down these fights let's go all right first match up on this card we've got natalia silva taking on Teresa bleeder with the octagon name being ronda so this is going to be two clashes of styles. Natalia Silva is going to be the striker. Teresa Bleeder is going to be the grappler. I was quite impressed with Natalia Silva's kicking ability against Jasmine. I went against her in that matchup. And yeah, Natalia Silva's kicking ability, pretty dangerous. Now on the flip side, Teresa Bleeder, this girl's a grappler. You know, got the Ronda as the octagon name. She wants to take you to the mat, ground and pound, submission. She's looking to do that Ronda Rousey stuff, right? Guys, you do have to be careful betting on women's mixed martial arts because even if you pick who you believe to be the technically better fighter, even if you make that pick, a lot of the time it just kind of comes down to who's more physical. 
you know, who's stronger, who can get the fight to the mat, which I do believe it's going to be Teresa Bleeder. However, I do believe the technically better fighter is going to be Natalia Silva. And if she can keep the fight standing, she's probably going to land a few damaging kicks. So for me, I'm going to side with Natalia Silva. I just hope she can avoid the mat. That's going to be my pick. All right, moving into a matchup between Fernie Garcia taking on Brady Heaston. Now, guys, this is a low-level matchup, but I do still believe it's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Fernie Garcia is coming off a loss. He's quite low level and Brady Heaston only five wins, two losses as a professional. This guy's looking to prove himself. He's looking to show his wrestling ability. You know, able to get Ricky Tercios to the mat in his UFC debut, but couldn't really make it the story of the fight. You know, started to get pieced up a little bit, had trouble with uh, Ricky's jiu-jitsu, but I don't think that's going to be the case coming up against Fernie Garcia. So yeah, if you're Brady, you know, you're going into this fight thinking, I'm going to take Fernie Garcia to the mat. I'm going to be strong on top and just basically keep the takedown. That's what you're looking to do. Now, Fernie Garcia on the flip side, this guy's probably going to be a better striker than Brady. But again, like the fight we just broke down, it's not going to matter for much if you can't stop the takedown of Brady Heaston. I think in round one, Fernie Garcia is probably going to get taken to the mat. But if he can like avoid that in round two, you know, if he can start to change the momentum in the matchup, then maybe he's got like a, a decent chance midway in the fight. But I think his cardio is not great. And that's probably going to help Brady continue to get takedowns over and over. So yeah, for me, I'm going to side with Brady. I'm looking for him to show good fight IQ. You know, if you've got the takedown round one and then it goes back to defeat. Round two starts, you need a takedown again. You need good fight IQ in this matchup. You know, Brady's only 23 years old. Win or lose, it's not going to be the end of his UFC career. But you do want to show good fight IQ. You want to show the UFC, look, you signed me. This is what I'm capable of. And that's going to be relentless wrestling. So yeah, my pick, I'm going to side with the wrestler, Brady Heaston, to win this matchup. All right, moving into a matchup between Maria Oliveira taking on stripper girl Vanessa Demopoulos. Guys, how crazy was it when uh, Alex Pereira got that fifth round stoppage? How crazy, oh my goodness. Right, so this is really a matchup from the UFC. We've really got to break this fight down. You've got a stripper, uh, a, sorry, a former stripper against Spider Girl, Maria Oliveira. Okay, so looking at who's got better jujitsu, I'd say Vanessa Demopoulos. Looking at who's maybe more powerful, I'd say again, stripper girl, Vanessa Demopoulos. Sorry, former stripper girl. Vanessa Demopoulos. Maria Oliveira has the height advantage and the reach advantage. I'm not exactly sure that she's a better striker, but if she uses her height and reach, it may appear she's better. You know what I'm saying? It might show on the optics that Vanessa's having a difficult time finding her shots. Then Maria Oliveira's kind of stabbing her with a couple teeps that aren't too aggressive, but just the optics, you know what I'm saying? It might look like Maria's better. So it's probably going to be a smart idea for Vanessa Demopoulos to get this fight to the mat. You know, if she's looking like she's not doing too well on the feet, you know, just use defense, get Maria to the mat, start to use your jujitsu. So yeah, it really comes down to who's going to do better. You know, who's going to have the better optics. I'm going to side with Maria Oliveira, but yeah, this, this, what is this matchup? What is this? All right, moving into a matchup between Ricky Tercios taking on Kevin Natividad. Now, guys, if you go back and look at Ricky's last matchup, you might rewatch that and think, I am not betting on Ricky Tercios, right? You might do that. You know, sometimes these fighters kind of show their techniques rather than trying to land the technique, trying to hurt the opponent with the technique. And that's kind of what happened to Ricky Tercios in that matchup. All of these fighters are in the gym. You know, day in, day out, sharpening their techniques, looking to get better in the gym. And when you're in the gym, you know, you're in sparring mode. You're not trying to hurt your training partners. You're just trying to, you know, sharpen your techniques. And you do that by sparring. Now, some fighters kind of have this issue where when it comes to fight time, it's not time to show techniques anymore. Now it's time to put violence into the technique and when you go back and look at Ricky's last performance it's like sparring you know he's showing techniques but he's not trying to put violence into the technique he's not trying to hurt the opponent and that was super frustrating so when Ricky Tercios attempts to use the calf kicks in this matchup I don't want to just see the calf kick 
I don't want to just see the technique. I want to see that calf kick damn near take a leg off. You know what I'm saying? Chop down the leg like a tree. That's really what I'm looking for with Ricky in this matchup. I want to see him show violence with the technique because that wasn't there in the last matchup. On the flip side, Kevin Natividad is 0-2 inside the UFC. And Miles Johns made this guy uh, a human slinky. You know what I'm saying? What he done to him? Oh my goodness. Yeah, for me guys, despite Ricky Tercios really having a frustrating performance in his last matchup, I would still have to side with Ricky to win this matchup. And the main reasons why I'm going to make that pick, I believe his jiu-jitsu is equally as good as Kevin's, if not better. I believe his activity may show in this fight. You know, Kevin hasn't exactly been a, a really active fighter and he kind of has been dusted two times he's gone to the UFC cage. So yeah, for me, I'm going to side with Ricky Tercios to win this matchup. Hopefully the calf kick can be violent and it can be a, a consistent weapon in this fight. Uh, moving into a matchup between Miles Johns taking on Vince Morales. Now, both of these guys are pretty good wrestlers, but I would have to say Miles Johns is maybe the better wrestler. And that's not to say that Vince Morales has bad wrestling. Like I said, the wrestling's pretty good. Now looking at the striking of Vince Morales compared to the striking of Miles Johns, I'd say that Miles Johns is probably a better striker than Vince, you know, way more powerful, way more explosive. And even the calf kick, you know, the calf kick's money for Miles Johns at times. I think Vince Morales is one of these guys that, you know, just is not great to bet on, you know, kind of falls behind on the scorecards. Had a good fight, a good performance against Smoker completely dusted that guy but Miles Johns is not smoker Miles Johns has good wrestling good power he's explosive he's a good mixed martial artist so yeah for me on this one guys I'd have to side with Miles Johns I just think he's got a, a higher ceiling in the UFC and he probably takes care of Vince Morales in this matchup uh, moving into a matchup between Jennifer Meyer taking on Marina Moroz now guys if you're gonna make a pick based on like recent form then we're going to pick Marina Moroz to win this matchup. She's not super active, but she is on a win streak. You know, beat Sabina Mazo, beat Myra Silva, beat Maria Agapova. Marina Moroz hasn't lost since like 2016, 2017. I would say that Marina Moroz definitely has good mixed martial arts wrestling. You know, the wrestling she showed against Maria Agapova, it was good. It was impressive. But then again, Maria Agapova is kind of disappointing so how much stock how much credit do you want to give to marina moroz in that matchup she did mauler though you know she she ragdolled her now on the flip side jennifer meyer she's going to be the black belt with this matchup and her punching power is pretty good you know not like the best strike you've ever seen but the punching power is there for jennifer meyer so yeah when i'm thinking about this matchup does Marina Moroz actually want to take Jennifer Meyer to the mat considering Jennifer Meyer is a black belt? You know, she's got good jujitsu. Does Marina want to do that? Probably not. And if it's on the feet, you know, this matchup really could just look 50-50. So, yeah, I think this I think this fight's potentially 50-50. And if it's going to play out close to how I'm assuming it will, you know, Marina not looking to take Jennifer to the mat and then we've got like a, a kickboxing matchup. If it does happen that way, I'm going to side with the underdog, Jennifer Meyer. And that's not really because Jennifer Meyer's much better than Marina Moroz. It's not to do with that. It's just to do with if the fight is 50-50, you want to take the plus money. You don't want to be on like minus 180, minus 200 Marina Moroz. And Jennifer Meyer's been active. You know, she's fought like Caitlin Chikagian, Mano Fiero, Jessica I. You know, she's been active. Even fought Valentina like two years ago. So I guess I'm going to side with the underdog, Jennifer Meyer, in maybe a, a close matchup. I'm uh, moving into a matchup between Zalgas Sumagulov taking on Charles Johnson. Now, guys, there's going to be a couple of things I don't really like about Zalgas, and there's going to be a few things I don't like about Charles. So let's get into breaking this one down. Now, the things I do like about Zalgas, it's going to be experience. It's going to be wrestling. It's going to be you know, kind of having big power at times. For example, he caught Jeff Molina with like a nice hook and you could see it was quite effective. You know, Zalgas will throw some bombs. So those are the things that I do like about Zalgas. But when I'm looking at things that I don't really like, it's going to be, you know, maybe not the quickest of fighters. And because he's not like super quick, maybe his opponent can uh, 
you know, land at a, a higher clip. You know, they're not going to be punished as much as what they would throwing against other fighters. So that's going to be something I don't really like. I think Charles Johnson could rack up the numbers, you know, could show a, a higher output than Zalgas. And to be honest, Johnson does have like really good cardio. So it would make sense that he's going to show more than Zalgas. He's going to land more, you know, just a higher clip, a higher percentage. Now, the two things that I don't really like about Charles Johnson, you'll notice if you go watch tape on Johnson that he really likes to kick the opponent. Now, that's something I like about Johnson, right? He likes to kick the opponent. But what I don't like is the kicks are kind of telegraphed and I feel like there's a few kicks that could be quicker and the kick kind of gets caught at times and if Zalgas makes that read you know tries to catch the kick that's a really good way to get the fight to the mat you know I'm looking to catch the kick of Johnson and that's my entry to get the fight to the mat now guys if that does happen and Zalgas is able to get the takedown off the kick it's interesting because Johnson's get up game is pretty good and that's why this one's quite an interesting matchup. I think all in all, speaking about this matchup, potentially the cardio of Charles Johnson and potentially the output would be the result in this matchup. So my prediction, I'm going to side with inner G Charles Johnson to win this matchup. If you waited to smoke with me, amen. If you've been smoking this whole time, double amen. If you're not a smoker, but you enjoy the smoke breaks, that's a triple A men gang, let's go. Now guys, this UFC card, it's not like the best, you know, for betting as well. It's not the best, but the UFC card after this, I've got some really confident reads, you know, better reads on that card than this card, but yeah, this card's not the best. So yeah, two questions on this smoke break. The first question is going to be, guys, please let me know who your confident reads are on this card because I've got predictions for this card, but not super, super confident reads. I feel like I've got that on the next one. So yeah, let me know who your super confident reads are on this card, which I'm assuming is going to be your Money City plays. And the second question Guys, if I said to you, who's better between Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira? The answer is Alex Pereira, right? He's the better fighter, right? I mean, every time they've fought, it doesn't matter. Alex Pereira wins the fight. So there's probably going to be a rematch. But yeah, who's better? Is it Israel or Alex Pereira? Because when you look at what happened in that matchup, there's a lot to like from Israel, but it didn't matter. Alex won the fight. Round five, he won the fight. So maybe it's like a silly question to ask because every time they're fought, Alex Pereira has won the fight. But it just doesn't seem like a, a straightforward answer. You know, like I said, there's a lot to like in the fight from Israel. And there's probably going to be a rematch. There should be. There will be. Guys, I'm sure that I said on that breakdown, if Alex Pereira wins, it's going to be like Usman and Leon. Now, obviously, Israel didn't fall to the mat the same way Usman fell to the mat, but it was still the same round. It was still the same score. And there was a change in of champions. So yeah, kind of kind of strange. All right, let's make main card predictions. Let's go. All right, moving into a matchup between Jack Della Maddalena taking on Danny Roberts. Guys, let's be honest. Jack Della Maddalena, JDM, is going to absolutely dust Danny Roberts. Like Jack's boxing's just sharp. You know, the jab's beautiful. The one-two's good to go. The bodywork is violent. You know, Jack Della Maddalena, this guy's a brilliant boxer. On the flip side, Danny Roberts is also a good boxer, but he just can't take a shot. And if you can't take a shot and you've got to go in there and box with Jack Della Maddalena... I can only see one result. And that result's going to be complete dusteration. You know, Jack Della Maddalena's probably going to butcher Danny Roberts. Like, guys, if you're Danny Roberts with this matchup, what do you even do to win? Like, what's the game plan to win this matchup? You've probably got to turn Russian, you know what I'm saying? You've got to turn uh, to a grappler. And Danny Roberts, his wrestling's okay. You know, it's okay. But I doubt the wrestling's going to be good enough to just keep Jack Dalla on the mat round in, round out. If Ramazan Amiv can't stop Jack Dalla Madalena on the mat, you know, can't keep him on the mat, you know, failed that choke. I highly doubt that Danny Roberts is going to be able to put on a, a wrestling clinic. You know what I'm saying? I doubt he can turn into a, a Russian. So for me, I'm going to side with JDM, Jack Della Maddalena, probably around one stoppage 
with this fight. That's my pick. Uh, moving into a matchup between Muslim Salikov taking on Andre Filho. Now, guys, when we're looking at who's the more credentialed striker, like who's way more proven when it comes to striking, it's going to be Muslim Salikov. Muslim Salikov has a, a career in kickboxing, you know, a lot of experience, a lot of kickboxing bouts. So without a doubt, the better striker is going to be Muslim Salikov on paper. However, the fight doesn't take place on paper. It's going to take place in the octagon. Now, the opponent, Andre Filho, this guy's primarily a boxer. You know, the boxing sharp is powerful. Essentially, it's going to be kicker versus boxer. The kicker's going to be Muslim Salikov. The elite sharp boxer is going to be Andre. Like I said, Muslim Salikov is arguably the more credentialed striker. Well, not even arguably. He is. He is the much better striker on paper however if Andre can kind of get past the kicks of Muslim I think he can cause some problems with his boxing because that's essentially what Muslim is looking to do you know he's looking to control the fight by controlling the range with his kicks and that's really the challenge for Andre you know the boxer's going to be quite ineffective if he's not in boxing range so what do we do we have to crowd the kicker we have to take away the kicks take away the space that Muslim wants to work with. I do believe round one it could be quite tricky for Andre but as Muslim slows down that's really where you've got to you know take away the space and I'd also say that Muslim Salikov is pretty old so as he starts to slow down in that second round that's really where you pick up the pace and I think if Andre does he probably shows good moments with the boxing probably scores could even stop Muslim Salikov so that's going to be my pick I'm going to side with the boxing of Andre in this matchup that's the result uh, moving into a matchup between Chase Sherman taking on Waldo Cortez Acosta now we've just seen Cortez compete against Jared Vandera and I really expected Cortez to just dust Vandera that's what I expected but that's not what we got with that matchup to be honest Jared Vandera competed better than I expected and he even caused some problems for Cortez you know the calf kick was the main problem now thankfully Chase Sherman doesn't really use the calf kick that's not really a weapon for Chase Sherman so that's a good thing for Cortez with this matchup and it's a good thing because when a, a fighter kind of exposes a weakness in your game you need time to fix that and obviously Cortez hasn't had time to really go back and fix it but like I said Chase Sherman doesn't really attempt calf kicks you know it's not really a weapon of his to beat an opponent with those techniques when you're looking at the game of Chase Sherman essentially this guy's a boxer you know looking to box with the opponent but most of the time doesn't really go down well you know the striking defense of Chase Sherman is pretty bad and I kind of expect the boxing of Cortez to be even more effective like way more effective than what it was against Jared Vandera and the main reason for that is going to be you know styles make fights I didn't really expect Vandera to load up on those calf kicks I didn't really expect it I kind of expected Jared Vandera to tried to wrestle the opponent but he was happy to strike happy to stand and trade now what I'm expecting for this matchup is potentially the same thing but minus the calf kicks this is going to be boxer versus boxer and whoever's got the better boxing that should be the winner and I believe that's going to be Cortez Acosta and obviously striking defense is going to go a long way when you've got two big heavyweights trying to throw down I think Wardo has better boxing and better striking defense. So yeah, I guess I'll go with uh, a round one stoppage for Cortez Acosta in this matchup. And moving into the co-main event, we've got Eon Kutalaba taking on Kennedy in Zechukwu. Now this is quite an interesting matchup because we know that Kutalaba is a way better wrestler than Kennedy. Like on paper, you know, Kutalaba's got the wrestling background and he's probably going to get Kennedy to the mat or is probably going to try to do that. However, despite the wrestling background of Kutalaba, we know this guy's pretty much got terrible cardio. You know, mid-round two, always dead in the water. He did show like a good ability against Devin Clark to go round in, round out, getting takedowns, you know. Had a good fight against Devin, but most of the time... Kutalaba, the cardio, no bueno. Now on the flip side, Kennedy, you know, sometimes kind of frustrating to watch. And I feel like that's when he doesn't really let his hands go, you know, kind of lets the opponent get ahead on strikes. 
and he's just kind of frustrating at times. However, if you look at Kennedy in his most recent two fights, I feel like there's big improvements. Like, big improvements. Now, against Nick Negamerianu, really butchered Nick on the feet. You know, his coaches said, look, you need to strike. You need to go. You need to put a beating on this guy. And he really did. He butchered him. Then you look at Kennedy against, uh, who was it? Carl Robeson. Man, Kennedy turned Russian. You know, Kennedy Namaga made of. Hey, looking good on the mat. You know, his ability to get the takedown, then to keep it, and then to go to work on the mat. You know, I think there's big improvements in the game of Kennedy in Zetraku. So yeah, like I said, at times, kind of frustrating to watch Kennedy fight, but most recently, it's looked good. It's looked way improved. I think what happens with this matchup is, you know, Kutalaba may try to knock Kennedy out or may try to get Kennedy to the mat. But if he gets tired, you know, Kennedy might just tee off. He might just tee off on him. And that's kind of what I'm leaning towards with this prediction. You know, Q has shown many times that he doesn't manage his cardio well. The energy expenditure is pretty bad. And I'd rather take a, a shot on predicting the guy that's making improvements fight to fight. Whereas Q Talaba just looks the same. You know, round one goes for the stoppage, but if he doesn't get it, that's where he's dead in the water. So yeah, my prediction, I'm going to side with Kennedy in Zetraku to potentially stop Q Talaba later in the fight. Uh, moving into the main event, we've got Derek Lewis taking on Sergei Spivak. Now, I feel like everyone knows that this main event is going to be either Derek Lewis gets a starch in, gets a dust in, or Sergei Spivak just kind of avoids that, maybe takes Derek to the mat. And just beats him up. It's going to be one or the other. We know that Derek Lewis isn't looking for a submission. He's not looking for a, a decision. He's not looking to win rounds. You know, he's not looking for any of that. Derek Lewis is just simply looking to connect you to the Shadow City server. He's looking to dust you. And to Derek's defense, because there's going to be people that say like he's one dimensional, is KO or bust. And it is, right? It is going to be that. But in Derek's defense... He does knock a lot of people out. He does do it. Now on the flip side, Sergei Spivak. This guy's been doing good work. Like, you look at the grappling work of Sergei Spivak. Guys, I almost want to change the name. I almost want to do it. Take away Spivak. Replace that. No mugger made of. I almost want to do it. You know, I've already done that with Aaron Blanchfield. And you look at the beatdown that Aaron put on Molly McCann. You know, Sergei Spivak's doing the same thing. I would also say that Spivak's jab is pretty good you know the jab's good but not a lot of fighters want to throw first against Derek Lewis I mean if you've got Francis Ngannou just staring at you unwilling to pull the trigger that kind of speaks volumes on how dangerous Derek Lewis really is and we all know that Derek Lewis can knock out anybody and it's not just a normal knockout it's a really bad knockout like complete dusteration now my prediction for this matchup is going to be if Spivak can avoid being starched being dusted in round one if he can avoid that his chances of winning is going to increase you know the chances of winning against Derek Lewis increase massively past round one past round two and the main reason for that is you know Derek hasn't got super good cardio it's pretty bad He's not trying to wrestle the opponent. He's not trying to win rounds, you know, with points, you know, a lot of output. You know Derek Lewis has dynamite, right? But the dynamite is there round one. It's there round two. But as soon as you go past that, there's no dynamite. There's quit. There's quit in Derek Lewis past seven minutes. And although Derek Lewis is like the size of a, a large, large fridge, you can get him to the mat when he fatigues. And if you get him to the mat, you're going to make him quit. So my prediction is going to be that Sergei Spivak has more ways to win this matchup. He's not one dimensional like Derek Lewis. And that's why I'm going to side with Sergei Spivak to win this main event. Essentially guys I believe if Derek Lewis doesn't get a stoppage early. Spivak probably takes him to the mat. And it's a, a ground and pound stoppage. As always drop down your money city plays. Keep your eyes to the sky never glue to your shoes. Mac Miller. Alright peace. Peace.